need a time to think things over There's been hiding the pain Yes, yes, so hell is here Today we have Gabriel and Hiki and this is his cover of I Want To Know What Love Is. This is an interesting one because he's sat there singing in his car recording on his phone. He has done a studio version but this version was the one that has been recommended to me far more frequently. I've been told in the comments that this is in response to online haters saying that his studio version is an unrealistic interpretation of his voice due to the microphone or the editing or something like that. Apparently this version is very good, it has some whistle notes in there as well, you know, the usual shebang with Gabrielle. Just like some of our previous reactions to him, he appears to be covering a cover. In this case, it's Mariah Carey's cover of the original song by Foreigner, another iconic song that everyone would have heard at some point or another. I'm very curious to see this. I like the concept of it, someone just sitting there filming themselves on a phone, very budget. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, let's pause there just before the chorus, I am sorry. Let's go over what we've heard so far. If you don't want to hear my analysis, you can go to the timestamp here. Mariah Carey's cover is in the same key as the original song. So there's no surprises that this is too. That's perfect for Gabrielle because it means that he'll be able to show off his range, particularly his high chest voice, which is one of the more recognizable features of Foreigner's songs. The arrangement Gabrielle's using here, the backing instrumentation, it's very similar to Mariah Carey's cover but not identical. Let me rephrase that. It's obviously her version that he's using but it's slightly different. We've seen this in my previous Gabrielle reactions. If you want to check them out my Gabrielle dedicated playlist will be up here. Just to show you what I mean by these slight differences let's use the introduction before he started to sing. Also, the introduction is shorter in Gabrielle's version. He starts singing at 17 seconds. I gotta take a whereas Mariah starts singing at 28 seconds or so. Take a little she does not do anything before that vocal entry though. Gabrielle, even though his introduction is shorter, he makes sure to get some vocalizations in there in some form. This comes in the form of some nice humming. He's giving us a nice little preview here of, you know, the audio quality we can expect from this performance, how it's very much live in his car. On the audio quality, it is quite strange, isn't it? Because that's the point, it's raw phone recorded footage. The music is coming out of the car speaker, I guess. Anyway, his bottom note that we just heard there, that's probably the lowest note I've heard him sing, if, if not one of them. He went down to this note, for context, that's basically the lowest note that would be considered acceptable to write for a tenor. And we know that he can well exceed the top of the expected typical tenors range as well. To get to these lower parts, we don't normally see him sing low. He's using a lot of air in his voice to help him. It creates more of a distinctive sound <gasps> instead of da. Right, so just after that we get this bit, and I just want to make a quick point on the lyrics. So Mariah Carey omits one verse before the chorus in her cover. She doesn't sing this verse. And it does sound like she's taken this last word of the second verse, the one that she's omitted, and put it here. Let's have a listen. I need it when I'm cold. 
That's interesting. That can't just be me hearing colder instead of older. Anyway, as Gabriel is covering Mariah and he's familiar with her version, he does the same thing. I wanted to point out this bit just to show how he is doing more embellishment. He starts his vocal run higher, so we see a tiny bit of it, a bigger range before moving into the pre-chorus. And although he uses a similar melodic shape to Mariah, he starts and ends on different notes. He starts here and ends here. She starts here and ends here. So if we take both of their starting notes and their finishing notes, he stayed the same distance above her. Then we get this melodically repeated phrase. I wasn't sure if on the second half of that phrase, with the words heart, ache and pain, if he would imitate Mariah in the sense that he'd be using his head voice, as we see he does do that, whereas the original song uses chest voice for this bit. There's been heartache and pain. Both versions are pained sounds in accordance with the lyrics, but for different reasons. Using head voice here, like Gabrielle chooses to, it creates more of a contrast with the pre-chorus bit that follows. where he's using his chest voice, besides right at the end where he quickly switches to his head voice. Right, well that's why I paused, I believe I owe you a chorus, so let's carry on. Alright, I'm going to do another pause here just before the chorus again. We haven't yet had any whistles, so I guess they come later on. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. There were some weird audio things going on there, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So from where we left off the chorus, he's singing it in this nice airy head voice. Because this style lacks the power of the chest voice or the blended voice, it means more of the focus is directed towards other elements of his voice. In this case, he's choosing to sing mostly longer sustained notes, which put an emphasis on that very quick vibrato, the wobble in his voice that he has. Then for the repeat of that phrase, just like the first time, he sings just one note in his chest voice. I know you can't show me that very first note at the bottom of the second half. Again, it's this idea of contrast within phrases to exaggerate one side versus the other. And this time he doesn't go for the option of the longer notes initially. We get a small vocal run. I know you can't show me. Moving up at the end and starting higher in pitch as well. This helps him to display that vocal accuracy he has in changing between notes very quickly. And this section seems to be about Gabriel switching between voice types. Hey. And a bit after that he did it as well. In my previous reactions, I mentioned how he can very easily transition between the voice types. Head voice, chest voice, blended voice, so we can't really see where the change has happened. Here, he's making it obvious by choosing to use those audible cracks when he makes the change. I think we can all agree this is a different type of sound. Okay, so this time, on the words heart, ache and pain, he opts to use his chest voice as full voice, which is more akin to the original. Been 
It's a much louder, much more powerful sound. And it's different to what he himself did before. So we get this nice variety in performance that is usually a good thing, especially when you're growing into a performance, as we seem to be doing here. Just after that, there was this weird effect. <laughs> It's almost like the Doppler effect or something. You know where something as it goes past you changes in pitch? I wonder why that's happened, but either way, to all those haters that inspired him to make this video, I guess it shows that this is a budget setup. And also there, he has the local high note. This C sharp up here. That's one note above here, which is what I call a wow moment for operatic tenors. Okay, I believe I owe you another chorus, so let's carry on. Blimey, what a way to end. Just in case anyone didn't realize, he, he can whistle. He can whistle like that. All right, we'll come back to that ending. Let's just go over a few final points. From where we carried on that chorus, he's not singing the melody, which isn't really a surprise because Mariah Carey also doesn't. It's still a little bit of a surprise to me, just because I know the original song, that's the version I listened to. Gabrielle here is doing the same thing that Mariah does. After that though is when he really starts to deviate away from her cover. He now is doing his own thing. Yeah, from here on it's like a show of his vocal capabilities. I'm just wondering where he was parked when filming this. Imagine walking past the car and looking inside and this is going on. <laughs> anyway, so that bit where we just paused, that's the key change. He set himself up quite unnaturally for that key change, or naturally, depending how you look at it. It doesn't sound natural because of the jump that he does there. That interval is here to here. This is a major sixth. I often say in my videos when we see this interval that it's one of my favorite intervals. I just find it to be quite catchy. Maybe Gabrielle is the same. All right, so then we get these whistles. Yeah, amazing. But then after them, we get this. That's not a, a pure whistle tone. That's him singing in his falsetto, perhaps with a tiny bit of a whistle blend in there. But you know, that's a top C. For some more context, that's the highest note a soprano is typically expected to sing, and it's also the highest note in the famous quartet from Allegri's Miserari Mei Deus. And then to finish off, I like how he switches between the voice types again. We have whistle voice, head voice, chest voice, blended voice. <laughs> All right, and if you're watching this, you're probably a big Gabrielle fan, so I think let's just watch that last section one last time. Sorry? I was curious how a phone would pick up that kind of audio, apparently quite well. Well, there we go, recorded in the car. I bet those haters feel a bit silly now, huh? Yeah, a performance like this, such raw footage, I think is always one of the best 
testaments to someone's true vocal capabilities. Not necessarily the quality that someone would pay to see in a concert, they'd rather have everything, you know, really properly done there or the audio engineering perfect. But something like this for some casual listening, yeah, I think it's a good decision. All right, well, let's leave that one there. As always, thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe and comment. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, join the community, vote on future polls, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below. And I will see you next time.